witches. This is the Witch Daily Show with host Tanya Brown. We are coming to you from New Orleans, Louisiana to offer you a bite-sized bit of magic. Our 20-minute-ish episodes are the perfect start to your day. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your pop of magic. morning witches it is june 1st 2021 it is tuesday i am tanya and this is the witch daily show today's episode is brought to you by chiffon duncan so let's get your day going with a little magic our quote of the day is change your thoughts and you change the world by norman vincent peel all right, witches, so we are talking tea, um, my personal favorite of the summer tea line, uh, Freezer Spell. This is um, a caffeinated, because it's green tea, tea. Uh, it takes two to three minutes to steep. Um, it makes about 30 cups, because uh, we have about two ounces per um, package. So for refreshing, this tea will brighten your day with creamy sweetness and sunny lemon notes. Blended with green tea, apple pieces, orange, lemon flavor, marigold flowers, vanilla, and uh, creme. So uh, yeah, I want to talk about uh, lemons and magic and kind of explain why this is called freezer spell. So lemon is one of my most favorite ingredients. It works for such a variety of spells. Lemon is uplifting and brightening and it opens up the mind, but it can also be sour and it can be used in spells to keep people away. Um, for those who don't know, a freezer spell is a classic spell that is uh, found um, in a lot of folk magic. Um, you can find it it's in hoodoo. Um, you can also find it in um, Southern American folk practices. Uh, so lemon spells, while like really caught on, kind of in the mainstream, like, uh, world, hoodoo spells are not Wiccan. Um, I think, I think, uh, lemon, uh, or freezer spells were really popular with Wiccans a while back. So there's this misconception. It's a Wiccan spell. It's not, it's a uh, folk magic, especially, uh, Southern and, uh, Southern United States and South American kind of folk magic. So, um, basically a freezer spell, uh, traditionally is going to be, uh, you think of someone you want to freeze out of your life. Uh, you write the names, typically the name down on a piece of paper, um, and you, uh, put it inside of a lemon, stitch it up. And, um, there you go. And of course that's the base spell. There's a number of ways to enhance it, to, uh, customize it, to change it, to fit the, your intention and the situation that's at play. So that is kind of your classic freezer spell. Um, the first time I ever heard of it was actually from um, a friend of my mom's who uh, is is from Cuba. So that was my first experience with it. And then I found um, other variations of it as I explored kind of uh, folk magic um, and found that there are quite a few different varieties of it among a lot of different groups. So this tea is based off of a lemon spell because it is lemon and uh, it is sweet and it is just refreshing and oof, my favorite. So yeah, lemons and magic. Uh, there's so many different ways. As I said before, it's brightening, uplifting, it's spiritually um, opening. So you can use it in cooking magic, you can use it in charm bags, um, spells for that purpose. And then as per the tea, you can also use it in freezer spells, banishing spells, or spells to sour. So yeah. All right, moving into some headlines. This comes to us from ScreenRant.com. Netflix's classic horror story movie is a mix of Midsummer and Texas Chainsaw. So this is written by Roxy Pell. A teaser trailer for Netflix's A Classic Horror Story mixes pagan symbols, satanic imagery, and mutilation of the flesh in what promises to be a thoroughly terrifying blend of Midsummer and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Italian film comes from director Roberto Defoe and Paolo Stripoli, and it stars Francisco Russo and Pepino Mazzotta. Um, Netflix posted the eerie teaser on YouTube, which draws viewers into an isolated cabin wherein all matter of nefarious going-ons are taking place. 
mysterious rituals, and violent torture are set against a soothing acoustic soundtrack, a juxtaposition that hints at the source of the movie's horror. The film streams on Netflix on July 14th. Um, so yeah, you can check out the trailer on YouTube. All right, witches, I'm going to throw this over to our moon correspondent, and then after this break, we will talk more. Hello to all of my astro gods and goddesses. This is Serendipity, the Chicago astrologer, coming at you with your daily moon mantra for Tuesday, June 1st. The waning gibbous moon splashes down into the vast ocean of Pisces today. Here, the moon continues its trine to Mercury and Venus. We are persevering with our need to rethink our relationships, examining their value in our lives. This doesn't mean we're looking at endings or beginnings. We may even be reminding ourselves of how lost we would be without this particular person in our lives. But if there is some drama floating about, we may have the urge to get our feelings out into the open and deal with them. Feelings certainly should be aired, but be careful about what you say and how you say it. During a Mercury retrograde, people don't always hear things the way we mean them to hear it. Your daily moon mantra is, it's the hard conversations that lead to an easier life. This has been your daily moon mantra with Serendipity, the Chicago astrologer, signing off and reminding you that you are in charge of your own destiny. This episode is brought to you by Chiffon Duncan Illustration. The artist behind the Witch Daily Oracle is now offering prints and cards at chefdraws.com slash shop. S-I-O-B-H draws dot com slash shop. And just for our coven of listeners, use code WITCH at checkout for 15% off your order. Be sure to follow along on Instagram and TikTok at Chef Draws for more spellbinding sketches. All right, so we have a question of the day. Let's see. Oh, it's actually a witch fail. Okay, so this is comes from a listener, Angie. Angie says, I don't know if this is a witch fail or a witch win, but a few months ago, my past insecurities kept crept creeping uh, in on my current boyfriend. I let myself overthink a situation, and I decided I would fix it so my guy could only... Um, perform around me, for me, or about me. I found a knot spell, and I did the spell. Um, well, a couple of months ago, my guy seemed really irritable, and I asked him why. He said it's because he couldn't perform. First, I thought, well, he was stressed out, um, or that there was something going on, and basically, um, he it basically caused a split in, um, their sex life. So, uh, basically says his ex, um, he has an ex he only confessed to recently and, uh, basically because he, I guess there was stress with his ex and, um, the spell just didn't work with their relationship. It caused, um, a lot of problems. So she says, um, the spell worked, it just didn't compute with their lifestyles, really what they wanted, um, and everything. And she says, I have stopped worrying about having the right everything and just did what I was feeling would work. So, um, yeah, pretty much, uh, yeah, that is a witch fail, I would say. Basically, I think that's one thing is, um, sometimes we do want to fix the more immediate issue. Does that make sense? Instead of what actually works for us in the relationship. 
So basically, um, she's saying that her and um, her boyfriend, that she uh, just was just feeling insecure. And so she wanted to do a spell to kind of force him to, uh, I guess, force him to prove the validation of the relationship. And she did a spell just based off that insecurity. Instead of thinking, okay, um, let's look at our relationship. Let's break down our relationship. What issues could be something that could cause a problem later down in our relationship? Communication or fidelity or whatever. So instead of, instead of focusing on what could later be a blockage down the road to help ease her anxiety, she just went for something really rash and uh that felt good in the moment of well if he can only perform for me that prove that e that will ease my anxiety that's obviously not how it works right because then you start to wonder well um it would actually hurt because now you're adding the anxiety of um is this only happening because i'm dictating it to does he really not want to be with me blah 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 so um if i would recommend if you ever do spell work for uh anxieties in a relationship, I would focus more on, um, well, one, think about your relationship. How does your relationship function and what some obstacles that could come up later, uh, that could hinder the relationship and then focus on that. Uh, cause doing the instant anxiety relieving, um, doesn't actually help. And then you are just leaving yourself for more turmoil, more confusion. And, um, the obstacles later on the road are still there. So yeah, that would be my advice. You know, if you are in a relationship where maybe one of you doesn't communicate as well, or one of you is a little bit more closed off, think about how that could affect your relationship later. Don't focus on just your anxiety at the, at the, at the moment. So hope that helps. All right. So we have another witch fail. This may just be an episode of witch fails. Uh, this comes to us from listener Elise, Elise. Elise says, hi, Tanya. This is actually a witch win slash witch fail. My husband has been out of work for a year due to being laid off because of COVID. And then due to not being able to find a job at the same position he was at. So I did a witch jar spell for him with his permission, of course. And the next day I got a promotion. I think I already read this. Did I read this last week, you guys? I'm sorry. If I did, we're reading it again. My bad. Okay. Um, the next day I got a promotion. I'm super thankful for my promotion, especially I was, as I wasn't expecting it. I guess though, I need to, to be more specific next time. I guess this wasn't a witch fail. Exactly. Just a witch misdirection. Thank you. Um, I think I already said this, but if not, um, I believe it's a witch win because here's the thing. Uh, we've talked about this. The number of steps magic has to go through to manifest can sometimes be a lot, right? Um, and it was probably easier for the spell, for the magic, to give you a promotion rather than get him a new job. For whatever reason, we don't know the obstacles that were in the way of him getting a new job, right? Is the market low? Are there no new positions? Is there something else going on? Um, sometimes magic works from the witch out. So if it can ease the situation for, with you first, um, it probably will. But also, it could be a position where the magic would not have been able to get him that job, right? So instead, it gave you a promotion so that you can ease and maybe find more financial burdens while uh, all the little behind-the-scenes obstacles of him getting a new job are worked out. So I loved this one. So if I read it twice, hey, it was a good one. We needed it. All right, so we have time for another one. This is a write-in from, I'm just pulling it up, listener Adam. It's another witch fail, so it's just an episode of witch fails. Adam says, um, I was doing a spell and I lit a candle, set my intentions, and then closed my eyes to meditate. All good. Well, I didn't expect for my cat to knock over the candle and put burn marks in my carpet. Cats, sometimes we love them, sometimes they drive us mad. Yep. 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 Uh, most witch veils have to do with candles. It's just, it's just the fact of, it's just the fact of the truth. All right. So we do have a little magic today. This comes to us from the June, uh, 
2021 issue of Which Way Magazine, which is out today, so check it out. Uh, this was written by Tiana Sicilla, Five Ways to Make Your Home More Magical. So whatever your personal witchy vibe and taste, adding small decor items to your space can create the perfect mood so that your home always feels ritual ready. Since we're all spending a lot of time in our homes than usual, it's ideal to add some unique elements to your home to give it that magical witchy feel and aesthetic. Uh, first, candles and incense. Candles and incense are wonderful for creating the perfect vibe. I like to place several natural pillar candles on side tables in each room in my place so I can light them whenever the mood strikes. You can opt either for scented or unscented ones. If pillar candles are too pricey, there is an option of using tea lights and small votive holders that can be painted or purchased to fit your style. Burning incense in various rooms can craft the ideal tone while also purifying the space for new workings. Personally, I do daily incense offerings to deities that I work with, but you can choose some that suit your purposes. My favorite incense blends include vetiver, frankincense, myrrh, and cinnamon. Mood lighting. If candles are not something you enjoy, then fret not. There are plenty of ways to implement the perfect lighting without the use of candles. Instead, pick up fairy lights, simple warm string lights, or add a dial to your overhead lighting so you can control the brightness. Plants and crystals. Plants and crystals are a fabulous way to add color to any space with, while cleaning the energies and air. Whatever your skill level with your plants, there are tons to choose from. You can go for low maintenance succulents, air plants, or even simple terrarium. Otherwise, uh, growing your own herbs and magical plants can be especially convenient to have on hand for your practice. If live plants are not an option, you can always purchase some faux plants or vines as well. Crystals are super handy for clearing energies in a space or bringing uh, in specific energies you want in that room. Tourmaline and obsidian are great for clearing negative energy, while uh, crystal quartz brings in clarity. Amethyst is wonderful for healing, and rose quartz is ideal for love. Altars and ritual rooms. If you're fortunate enough to have ample space in your home, consider adding multiple altars or ritual uh, or a ritual room to your place. You can establish a main altar for workings and add several smaller altars um, on a mantle or side table. This is great if you celebrate the wheel of the year and want to decorate these areas with the colors, plants of the season. Of course, if you have any extra room, you can convert a small space into a ritual room. This is truly the dream and the sky is the limit when decorating. Finally, ethereal elements. Incorporating some ethereal elements into your home is a great way to create your own aesthetic. Whether you're traditionally witchy or goth or go more green witch vibe, there are plenty of ways to do this. Put up tarot, astrology, or palmistry tapestry. Place small crescent moon dishes on your coffee table. Hang starry lights from the ceiling or decorate your kitchen with cute witchy mugs and signs. If you consider yourself uh, more of a natural witch, consider adding wood and other earthy elements into your home. Whatever your decorating style and tastes, these can easily be adapted to suit the items, colors, and limitations of your home without too much trouble. The point is to bring more joy and magic to infuse your home with a sense of intention and wonder that builds daily excitement for your practice. So Tiana Sisla lives in sunny Southern California, where she works as a writer and content strategist. In her spare time, she acts in indie films and watches too much TV. She also is the founder of the natural beauty and lifestyle blog, Storybook Apothecary. All right, witches, I do want to give some shout outs today. First, I want to give a shout out to listener Chrissy Faye. Chrissy Faye, you fair, sophisticated Loch Ness monster. I also want to give a shout out to listener Breck Gonzalez. Breck, you sweet, brilliant gnome. And then finally, Jennifer DiMucci. Jennifer, you bedazzled, fair tiger cub. Thank you three so much for being Patreon supporters. I really, really appreciate you. And before we leave, we do have a card poll. Our card today is the Ghost from the Witch Daily Oracle, which we do have some decks left, by the way, so go check them out. So the Ghost is all about afterlife, continuation, and purgatory. It was contributed by myself. A timing, reach out in order to move. Yes or no, it is neither. What do we have when we don't have left? What do you? What do we have when we don't have death or life? 
purgatory. You may feel stuck just on the outskirts of reality and can't get your footing. Things aren't beginning, but they are not ending. Instead, you're just on the other side of the ether. Reach out to the other side and figure out what unfinished business you have. Love reading. You're stuck. Figure out how to get out of this rut. Career reading. You're not in the loop. Health reading. Figure out what stage of life you're in. All right, witches, that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget any books, decks, headlines, sources, or anything else we reference today can be found in the podcast episode description. I hope you guys have a great day, and we will talk again tomorrow. Witches, we hope that you have an amazing day filled with magic and inspiration. If you'd like to support the podcast, head on over to our Patreon. Need a support system? Find The Witch Daily Show on Facebook and our website, witchdailyshow.com.